So, characteristics of life. Basic six are, all living things must have order. Number two, must respond to stimuli. Number three, must be able to reproduce. I'm just gonna, like, here. Um, must be able to grow slash develop. Must be able to process energy. Must be able to maintain homeostasis. So, you're asking what these are. I'll tell you. So, number one, order. All cells must have order. This means that all living cells have organized cell structures, which means, this means that even the simplest little teeny tiny little cell um, has super complex structure. And even so then like multicellular structures like us, like people, or like frogs, or like caterpillars, or like um, dogs, babies, they, they are, they have like, you know, tissue, cellular structures that create tissue. So, and that and in turn makes organs to, which, you know, they all work together to, you know, function together. So like order m means that they're all, you know, they're organized cell structures. Number two, the ability to respond to stimuli. You may be asking, what does this mean? What it means is, um, a being or a plant can respond to stimuli by, like, okay, so like here's an example. Plant can bend towards light, or like climb up a fence, or like do something to benefit its survival and respond to it. So like we respond to stimuli like every day, doing like everyday stuff. Um, so when plants move away or towards light, move away or towards light, um, they have different names for this type of stimuli or response to stimuli. So if it's moving towards uh, light or like the sti or like stimuli, food, water, like bacteria can move from chemicals. Um, stuff like that. Basically, that means that uh, that's called a positive. Or wait, when it moves towards it, that's called a positive response to stimuli. Because that means it's going towards it. It wants to be near it. But it, if it's a negative response, that means that it's moving away. Because it doesn't, it doesn't need to be by it. It doesn't want to. It's probably going to kill it. going to do something to it. It feels that there's danger. It's gonna move away. So like even little small little tiny itty bitty cells, they know how to do this because they're living organisms and they need to know it to be a living organism. In reproduction, single celled organisms First start by duplicating their DNA, and then, well, they, they split their DNA in half, then they duplicate it, and then, like, right as they're about to, as they're about to, like, split and duplicate, they, they pass it on. But multicellular organisms, like, like us, like me, they, um, typically develop, like, specialized, uh, ways of passing down their DNA, their genes, uh, it, onto their offspring. When reproduction happens, genes containing DNA from, you know, the mom and dad, or the two cells, or the, or the same cell, um, genes containing them, uh, the, the containing the DNA, the D, this DNA is passed on to the offspring. So like, half the DNA from the mom, half the DNA from the dad, or like parts of DNA from the bone of the mom and the dad, boom, come together to form offspring uh, with similar traits from each mom and dad. So these genes that have, you know, DNA from both of them uh, come from the same organisms. This ensures that, you know, you won't be having any, you know, baby T-Rexes anytime soon, if you know what I'm saying. 
or baby kangaroo, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So, growth and development basically means that organisms will grow and develop based on, you know, their genes, what's coded for their genes. That basically mean, like, means how, they're gro how, the, how, how they will grow. So, like, me, I'm six foot, um, six foot three, and that's because in my genes, I was coded to grow that high. Um, unlike... Logan uh, Kennigsberg being five foot three, um, his genes coded him for him to grow that high. Now I only grew this high because uh, I got that uh, like trait from my parents. But some people might not get that trait from their parents and might grow to a different height, uh, but will still grow like facially and structurally based on how their parents look. Because uh, that's who they got their DNA and genes from. Energy processing. So, what energy processing is, is all organisms, they use some sort of energy, like, they use energy to, from, like, food and, like, from certain things to be able to, you know, like, live and, like, be able to, like, the energy, you need energy for your organs to work, you need energy to breathe, you need energy to do a ton of stuff. So like s plants, for example, they um, get their energy from the sun. But us, we get our energy from molecules in the stuff we eat. So when you get energy from the sun, that's called photosynthesis. And when you get energy from stuff you eat, that's called um, cellular respiration. Because it's in the molecules, and you, and yeah. Um, an example of this would be, imagine this was a real plant, and uh, I was the sun, and I'm standing up here, and I shoot my little, little rays down onto him, and he gets um, energy from that through photosynthesis. Last but not least, we have the ability to maintain homeostasis. So if you're wondering, homeostasis quite literally means the ability, and wait, let me just read it so I don't get it wrong. The ability of an organism to maintain constant internal conditions. So that basically means like an organism has to be able to withstand their environment. So if it's windy, and it's super cold, um, they're gonna have to change their body temperature to adapt to that. And organisms have to have that in order to survive, or else they won't be able to survive uh, in any condition ever. So like, for example, so that's the end of my video, guys. Um, make sure to like, like, and subscribe. Please don't thumbs down on it. Um, I'm really tired. It took like all day, but it's okay. You know, it's all right. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, Miss Martinez. Okay, good night.